Hey guys, how are you? In this video, I'm going to discuss the seven changes caused by a lack of vitamin B. This alteration is very frequent, and you will understand why it happens, what the symptoms are, and who are at risk. We will talk everything about vitamin B. Firstly, we do not produce vitamin B. That means you have to get it from your food, from your diet. And what is the main source of vitamin B? Foods of animal origin. So, red meat, eggs, milk, fish, and seafood. And you must be thinking, Oh, if I can get it from the food, I won't have a deficiency, right? Wrong. There are three mechanisms associated with vitamin B12 deficiency. And this is very important for you to understand. First, we have seen that if you don't eat properly, you don't consume the sources of vitamin B12, as is the case with vegetarians and vegans. We have already seen that the main source is animal foods, so you don't consume them. Secondly, you don't absorb it. Sometimes you even consume it, but your intestine cannot effectively absorb vitamin B12 because this may occur. If you use any medication that messes with this absorption, I will explain them later. You have some disease, like Crohn's disease or celiac disease itself. It can reduce the absorption of vitamin B12. Or because you have had surgery, like bariatric surgery, it interferes with the vitamin B12 absorption because for us to absorb vitamin B12, the stomach needs to produce a type of acid, specifically the intrinsic factor and intrinsic factor. At the intestinal level, it performs, it aids in the absorption of vitamin B. So anyone who has had an operation or takes any medication will also be at risk. It's important to say not only those who take medication or have had surgery, but also the elderly above 65 years old. Because over time, the intestine and stomach can actually reduce acid production, making it harder to absorb vitamin B. And the third group is when you need greater consumption, like during pregnancy or breastfeeding. But those two are the most common. I've already talked a little about the risk group, so let's add to that list. So, vegans, vegetarians, seniors over 65, People who've had surgery, those with intestinal diseases and also those with autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the most common form of hypothyroidism, or Graves' disease, the most common form of hyperthyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Why? Because if you have one autoimmune disease, you're more likely to have another. There's also a condition called atrophic gastritis or pernicious anemia as it's also known. This atrophic gastritis will lead to changes in the stomach causing a decrease and ultimately no production of intrinsic factor, which is essential for vitamin B12 absorption. Many people ask if thyroid changes can cause vitamin B12 deficiency or conversely, can vitamin B12 deficiency cause thyroid problems? One has nothing to do with the other. The connection is that both are autoimmune diseases and as such, they might occur together more frequently. Excessive alcohol consumption also impacts the absorption of vitamin B. Let's talk about medications. Here I'm going to highlight two groups. The groups that interfere with the production of stomach acid, like the prazolus, meprazole, exomeprazole, pantoprazole, and also cimetidine, anitidine, and the other class. I'll highlight here is metformin. Metformin is also a risk factor for vitamin B12 deficiency. This doesn't mean you're going to stop using a medication. As I deal a lot with diabetes, being an endocrinologist, I end up prescribing metformin, and this warning here is not for you to stop using it, but to know that you're in the risk group and do an assessment of your vitamin B12 levels. Now that we've already talked and you've understood a bit about vitamin B12, I'm going to discuss the alterations it can cause and the diseases related or even caused by a lack of vitamin B. Number one, dementia. That's right, a lack of vitamin B12 can cause dementia. It starts with forgetfulness. If you don't evaluate it and aren't aware, or if you don't do the treatment, which is relatively simple, I'll talk about how the treatment is done later. If you aren't aware, it can even lead to dementia, one of the reversible causes of dementia. Look how important this video is. Even if you've gotten this far and still haven't liked it, help me out and like this video. You're helping other people by spreading this information as well. And the system understands that the video is important and ends up spreading the content. The goal is 10,000 likes, so it helps me since I'm talking about dementia, memory alteration. Another cause that should always be evaluated is the thyroid. 
Changes in the thyroid can lead to dementia, more specifically, hypothyroidism. So when it comes to forgetfulness, memory alteration, you always have to evaluate vitamin B12 and TSH along with T4 lipo to see the thyroid function. The second change, and this one is very important, anemia. That's right. What does vitamin B12 deficiency anemia mean? Since vitamin B12 is involved in the production of blood cells, it's essential for the bone marrow to produce them. The bone marrow uses it as a substrate, like an ingredient to produce red blood cells. If you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, you might have a hard time producing these cells, and yes, you could end up with anemia. So what are the symptoms of anemia? Pallor, a reduced physical efficiency. You used to be able to do a set of exercises, for example, climbing four flights of stairs, but now you can't, you can only do one or two. That feeling of tiredness, fatigue, shortness of breath can also be symptoms of anemia. In more severe cases, it can even cause heart failure. I'd like to point out that a blood test can greatly assist in this diagnosis. It's quite simple. You've likely had it before, you're familiar with it. It's called a blood count. In addition to showing anemia, there's another clue, which is the size of red blood cells found in the MCV. Have you come across this acronym? The blood count can give a big hint about vitamin B12 deficiency. Why? In deficiency, the red blood cells get bigger. So we have what we call megaloblastic anemia. MCV increases and gets bigger than 100. In other cases, other causes of anemia, like the most frequent one, anemia due to iron deficiency or iron deprivation anemia. This MCV is less than 80. What's the normal for VAV? 80 and 100, so greater than 100, indicates a lack of vitamin B12, and less than 80 indicates a lack of iron deprivation, a lack of iron. Other causes, like folic acid deficiency, can also increase this MCV. This change in the blood count doesn't give a diagnosis, it's just a clue. Through this clue, the doctor can then make the diagnosis more accurately, which I'll talk about at the end of this video, how the diagnosis is made, and also the forms of treatment. Number three, changes in the central nervous system, like depression. A lack of vitamin B12 can increase the frequency of depression. It's a risk factor. Remember when I talked about dementia, changes in memory? So you can already imagine the two main functions of vitamin B. The first essential function is in the central nervous system neurons. A lack of vitamin B12 can even lead to a condition called neuron demyelination. The sheath can be damaged, so make a note of that. The sheath that ends up protecting the neurons can be damaged. The second major function is in the medulla for the production of red blood cells. Continuing with our video number four. Hair loss? Yes, our hair also needs vitamin B. If you have a deficiency of this vitamin, it may be a cause of your hair loss. Number five, changes in balance, dizziness. Vitamin B12 is fundamental for our proprioception, which is closely linked to balance. Sometimes the person even has difficulty walking or changes in gait. Especially if you are in the risk group and have dizziness, you need to check your vitamin B12 levels. It's important to remember that not everyone with a vitamin B12 deficiency will have all the symptoms or changes I'm discussing in this video. Sometimes, you may just have one symptom or change, one hint towards the diagnosis of vitamin B12 deficiency, okay? So, it doesn't mean that if you don't have all the symptoms, you don't have a change in vitamin B, or because you have one or two. I want to make this very clear as it's a question you folks ask often. Number six, also very common. Numbness in the hands and also in the legs of the lower limbs. Why? We've already seen that vitamin B12 is critical for the health of neurons. If you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, it can cause tingling. In medical language, we call it paresthesia. And this symptom, which is very common, is often the one that provides a hint for the diagnosis. Number seven, Vitamin B12 deficiency has been linked to changes in vision, more specifically with age-related macular degeneration or AMD, so vision problems. Look at what vitamin B12 does for our body and the diagnosis, treatment, important issues about vitamin B12 that I'm going to talk to you about now. You don't need to have symptoms like dizziness, anemia, or even numbness in your hands or lower limbs to get tested for vitamin B. Ideally, before you have symptoms, you should already start treatment because treatment is relatively simple and easy to do. So, especially if you are in the risk group, it's worth talking to the doctor so he can request the vitamin B12 test. Due to the extremely high frequency, 
the diagnosis is made with the dosage of vitamin B12 in the blood. There are two early markers that show up even before vitamin B12 drops below the reference. These two tests, the first is homocysteine and the second is methylmalonic acid, can help with the diagnosis. People who have vitamin B12 deficiency should also be evaluated for other deficiencies. In my case, iron, folate, and vitamin B. This last one here, the test is not so readily available, but iron and folate are necessary for a complete assessment. Vitamin B12, which I'm gonna talk about now. You don't have to exhibit symptoms like dizziness, anemia, or even numbness in your hands or lower body to get tested for vitamin B. Ideally, before you even have the symptoms, you should already start the treatment since the treatment is relatively easy and straightforward, okay? So especially if you belong to a group of doctors, it would be beneficial for you to discuss with the doctor about getting a vitamin B12 test due to its frequency, which is extremely high. The diagnosis is determined by the level of vitamin B12 in your blood. There are two early indicators that appear even before the vitamin B12 drops below the reference range. These two tests the first one is homocysteine, and the second is methylmalonic acid, which can assist in the diagnosis. Anyone with a vitamin B12 deficiency should also be evaluated for other deficiencies, including iron, folate, and vitamin B. For the last one, the test isn't as, but iron and folic acid are needed to make this complete assessment, because when the body lacks vitamin B12, it can also alter how it ends up using other nutrients, such as iron and folic acid. So many times, the patient starts to take replacements and they end up getting worse. This is not so rare because they also have other deficiencies, okay? So this analysis has to be done together. We have a stock of vitamin B. So it's not because you've gone a few days without consuming animal products or because it's been a month since you started using metformin or omeprazole for example that you'll develop a vitamin b12 deficiency right after sometimes this takes years so periodic assessment of vitamin b12 levels is also necessary the treatment is preferably done by mouth, orally, by tablets. In some cases, the doctor may choose to prescribe this treatment through intramuscular injection. For instance, when the doctor already knows that the patient has an absorption difficulty, won't make the absorption of vitamin B12 any better, just like in the case of pernicious anemia, where there is no production of intrinsic factor, you won't be able to absorb. So it depends on what is causing this B12 vitamin deficiency. And the dosage, a lot of people ask about the dosage. It's quite broad. Just to give you an idea, it can vary from 50 up to 6,000. So I can't give you a standard dosage here because it needs to be evaluated individually. Did you like this video? From 0 to 10, what would you rate it? If you give it a 10, I will make more videos like this one. Also, let me know what city and part of the world you're watching this video from. Write it in the comments below. If you're not subscribed yet, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell icon and enable all notifications. That way, whenever I post, YouTube will notify you. Sending a notification so you can follow the new videos.